Learning objectives to learn the layered architecture of the operating system, to learn the monolithic architecture of the operating system, and to learn the microkernel architecture of the operating system. So, operating system has three architectures. One is the layered architecture. One is monolithic, and the other is microkernel architecture. Operating system structures, layered structures, monolith structure, and microkernel structure. Layered structure. The operating system can be implemented with the help of various structures. So various structures can be used to implement the OS. The structure of the OS depends mainly on how the various common components of the operating systems are connected. and melded into the kernel so how are the various components connected and how are they melded into the kernel so how are they put inside the kernel depending on this we will have to follow the structure of the operating system the layered structure approach breaks up the operating system into different layers and retains much more control on the system so the layered structure will have the many different layers and the different layers will be controlling the whole system so they will have the control on the system up the bottom structure is the layer 0 this is the hardware and the topmost layer is layer n which is the user interface so there are various layers layer 0 is the bottom most layer and this bottom most layer is the hardware and the topmost layer is the user interface so between the hardware and user interface uh, there are many other layers uh, between the hardware and the user interface there are many other layers this is the bottom layer and user interface is the topmost layer uh. These layers are so designed that each layer uses the functions of the lower layers only. So it will use the functions of the lower layer. It specifies the debugging process as if lower layer levels are debugged and an error occurs during debugging. The error must be on that layer only as the lower levels have already been debugged. So. the lower layers are first debugged then only it moves to the higher layer so the error must be only on that higher layer and not on the lower layer so these are the various layers so you have a hardware layer that is the first layer cpu scheduling is the second layer memory management is the third layer process scheduling fourth layer io buffer fifth layer and user program is the sixth layer so this is the topmost layer uh, that is the user interface uh, or the user program or the user application and hardware is the bottom most layer uh. so architecture of the layered structure this type of operating system was created as an improvement over the earlier monolithic layer uh. The operating system is split into various layers in the layered operating system and each of the has its layers has a different functionality so the hardware layer will have a different functionality the io buffer will have a different functionality memory management will have a different function cpu scheduling will have a different pro function process management will have a different function so each and every layer has a different functionality There are some rules in the implementation of the layers as follows a particular layer can access all the layers present below it but it cannot access them so a particular layer can access all the layers present below it but it cannot access them that is layer n minus 1 can access all the layers from n minus 2 to 0 but it cannot access the nth layer so that means that if memory management is there memory management can access cpu scheduling it can access the hardware layer also so it can access all the layers which are present below it layer 0 deals with the allocating the processes switching switching between the processes 
when interruptions occur or the timer expires it also deals with the basic multi programming of the cpu so layer 0 is the first layer and the first layer is for switching of the processes if there is a switching of the process which occurs it takes care of that thus if a user wants to interact with the hardware layer the response will be traveled through all layers from layer n minus 1 to 1 up so if a user wants to access with the hardware layer what will happen response will be traveled to all layers from n minus 1 to 1 each layer must be designed and implemented such that it needs only the services provided by the layers below it so memory management will require the services of hardware layer so hardware is kept below memory management layer up user programs which is the topmost layer before a user program is executed the program has to check for process management memory management io buffer cpu scheduling and hardware so it is kept at the topmost layer so that it can access all the layers so that all layers below it can be accessed advantages of layered structure there are several advantages of layered structure modularity this design promotes modularity as each layer performs only the task it is scheduled to perform up. so only that task will be performed if the layer is cpu scheduling layer then cpu scheduling will only take place up. cpu scheduling means the time one process should be present in the cpu will be decided by this layer that how much time should be given to a process so only one layer performs one particular task easy debugging as the layers are discrete so it is very easy to debug suppose an error occurs in cpu scheduling layer the developer can only search that particular layer to debug unlike the monolithic system where all the services are present so in the monolithic system later we will see that all the services are present so we have to for debugging each and every service has to be checked easy update a modification made in a particular layer will not affect the other layers if i am making a modification in the cpu scheduling layer if i modify this other layers will not be affected no direct access to hardware the hardware layer is the innermost layer so user can use the services of the hardware but cannot directly modify or access it up unlike the system simple system in which the user has direct access to the hardware so there is no direct access to the hardware abstraction every layer is concerned with its functions so the functions and the implementations of other layer are abstracted to aid that means they are hidden abstraction means hidden so cpu scheduling layer will only have cpu scheduling function uh, and this cpu scheduling will not know will not know the function of the io buffer uh, of io buffer uh. why because io buffer functions are abstracted are hidden from the cpu scheduling layer uh. next are the disadvantages of layered structures complex and careful implementation as a layer can access the services of the layer below it so the arrangement of the layers must be done carefully for example the backing storage layer uses services of memory management layer so it must be kept below the memory management layer so the backing storage layer will use the services of memory management so if you don't keep it below you cannot access that layer up thus with great modularity comes complex implementation slower in execution if a layer wants to interact with other layers and what happens it has to travel all the layers up. if hardware wants to interact with the user program or the user application then it has to cross many layers if hardware wants to interact with the user program it has to cross 
द सी पी यू शेड्यूलिंग लेयर मेमरी मैनेजमेंट लेयर प्रोसेस मैनेजमेंट लेयर आई ओ मैनेजमेंट लेयर सो इट हैज टू क्रॉस मेनी लेयर्स सो एग्जीक्यूशन बिकम्स स्लोअर फंक्शनैलिटी इट इज नॉट ऑलवेज पॉसिबल टू डिवाइड द फंक्शनैलिटी मेनी टाइम्स दे आर इंटर रिलेटेड एंड कैन नॉट बी सपरेटेड सो टू लेयर्स कैन हैव द सेम फंक्शनैलिटी टू लेयर्स कैन हैव सेम two layers have same functions so when they have same functions it is difficult to separate the two layers or if the functions of the layer are overlapping or they are interconnected in any way then there will be a problem in separating them communication there is no communication between non adjacent layers uh, that means between the memory management layer and hardware they are not adjacent so there will be no communication between them uh, if they are not present adjacent to each other so non adjacent layers do not have any communication monolithic system architecture there is a application program in the user mode and the kernel mode has system services operating system procedures and hardware so in this this box that is the monolithic kernel that is in the kernel mode all the functions are performed what happens all functions are performed so there is no distinction between the functions there is no no none there is no distinction that's why it is said that in case of a monolithic structure all the services are present so it is not easy to debug so if there is a problem in task management has some problem and you want to debug task manager but for that you will have to check graphics engine interrupt management memory management task management when you check all these functions you understand that there is a problem with the task management and then you debug this part so for debugging you have to check the entire kernel the entire monolithic kernel that is a drawback of the monolithic system so monolithic is the old type of operating system it has no well defined structure the entire operating system works in the kernel space that means it works in the kernel mode increasing the size of the kernel as well as the operating system so it increases the size of the kernel as well as the operating system in the layered structure the kernel is very small in the monolithic structure this whole part is the kernel so size of the kernel is also increased size of the operating system is also increased file management memory management device management and process management is directly controlled within the kernel with the help of system calls so these all functions are controlled within the kernel with the help of system call os execution is faster why is the os execution faster because it has to not cross any kind of layers everything is happening inside the kernel itself so as compared to your layered structure layered structure has slow execution because in case of a layered structure you have to cross you have to pass through many layers but over here everything is taking place inside the kernel so things are taking place inside the kernel itself so execution is faster if any service fails the entire system crashes reason being why does the entire system crash 
because everything is present inside the kernel so if my task manager fails to operate up it fails to operate up, what will happen it will affect the graphic engine it will affect the interrupt manager it will affect the memory manager if only one system fails to operate then other systems are affected but in case of a layered structure in case of a layered structure if one service is failing then the system will not crash only that layer will crash so in a layered structure if one service fails only that layer crashes in case of a monolithic structure if one service fails if the task management service fails the graphic engine will fail interrupt manager will fail memory management will fail in short the kernel will fail as a whole the os will fail as a whole the system will crash the entire operating system needs modification if a user adds a new service and modification is difficult so why will the entire system require modification because everything is present inside the kernel example unix vmx linux os 360 open vms multix and aix bsd these are the examples of the monolithic structure features of the monolithic operating system it is a simple structure works for smaller task so if you want to perform some small task then you don't have to worry about the execution small task will be executed faster you don't have to worry about debugging because it is a smaller task so you will not obviously make mistakes so no problem of debugging execution will be faster no flare will fail because task is a smaller task and modifications will also not be required communication between the components and fast operating system why is the operating system fast because everything is present inside the kernel so no instructions as such have to be send between the layers so everything is there in the kernel every management takes place in the kernel limitations of the monolithic operating system if any one services fail it leads to entire system failure if the user has to add any new service user needs to modify the entire operating system so if there is a new service which has to be added entire system has to be modified next is the micro kernel system structure so there is a application there is a application ips unix server device driver file server then you have basic ipc virtual memory scheduling and you have the hardware so between the hardware and the application program you have these two layers so now to keep the kernel as small as possible so the kernel is as small as possible it is not having this layers layers make the kernel bigger micro kernel and system applications can interact with each other by message passing micro kernel is solely responsible for three most important services of the operating system that is inter process communication to communicate between two processes so you have inter process communications which can be independent communications they can be cooperating communications so this will be coming in module number 3 that what is exactly inter process communication memory management cpu scheduling again this is in module number 2 how is the cpu scheduled how is the os helping in cpu scheduling how is the os helping in inter process communication ellipse ide is a good example of micro kernel architecture so this is a example user is there so there is a application program message passing device drivers there is a message which is passing file system message is passing message is passing to what it is being passed to the kernel and this is what this is the user so this is the user mode and inside this box we have the kernel mode in this kernel mode you can perform these functions that is inter process communication memory management and cpu scheduling advantages kernel is small and isolated hence functions better 
expansion of the system is easier it is a secure system expansion of the system is more accessible so it can be added to the system applications without disturbing the kernel micro kernels they are modular and different modules can be replaced reloaded modified even without touching the kernel without recompiling we can add new features and fewer system crashes when compared to the monolithic system this advantage is providing services in micro kernel are expenses as compared to the monolithic system context switching or a function call needed when the drivers are implemented as proceed jars or processes respectively so move as much from the kernel into the user space communication takes place between the user modules using message passing up benefits easier to extend a micro kernel easier to port the operating system to new architectures it is more reliable less code is required because in running the in kernel mode and it is more secure so this is the basic comparison between the micro kernel structure and the monolithic structure so size micro kernel is obviously smaller in size monolithic is larger in size faster execution slower execution easily extendable it is hard to extend if a service crashes it does effect on working of the micro kernel the whole system will crash to write a micro kernel more code is required over here less code is required example is you have to know the example so this is the important distinguish between micro kernel structure and monolithic structure thank you